Equestrious Mirage by me. Last chapter. A perfect dream. The problem with nightmares is you can wake up. Luna took a deep breath as she looked at her crying sister and hugged her. Carefully, she turned to her eyes towards Trixie and said, Trixie, also I said, the port. Yes, mistress. Trixie said through her own tears, trying to regain her composure. At approximately 5 p.m., Trixie and her five companions went into the dream world to bury the princess. After many trials and a long battle in her mind, we... We... Fell. As that word fell from Trixie's lips, Trixie found herself beginning to cry harder. Well, of course you failed. That was what I was expecting you to do. Ra's voice came in low and soft as a black fog crept in past the threshold of the medical room. Luna's eyes opened wide in horror as the fog began to cover her body. Taya! Luna, Celestia looked as Luna reached out for a hug for her. Reached out one for her as the fog began to cover her body. Luna! And look at all of you, mourning the death of your hope, becoming lost in a sea of despair. Mirage's voice continued as the black fog began to fill the room, circling Trixie and her friends. Mirage! Trixie growled, her face turning into an angry scowl as she grabbed Twilight's crown and her magic, and placed a golden circle on her hat. Her sadness now replaced with anger, as he quickly began to look around the now black and darkened room. The fog could now left the room as a black void, devoid of the bodies of the bears and the princesses. Lightning! Carrot Top! Bless the fourth! Octavia! Lyra! Are you girls alright? I'm here! It's so Lyra! Shout Lightning Dust. I don't know where the others are. Octavia and Blossom Fourth are with me! Carrot Top says. She joined up with Trixie. To see the sad points trying behind her. Trixie, where are we? I saw Tavia. In Mirage's illusion, now, I think, Lyra said, looking around the empty void. She probably wants a little. And now, you're all together. How sweet. I do love it when heroes fall together. Mirage's voice echoed through the small room. Trixie looked towards the direction of the voice, her face staring down with a look that was equal parts anger, Revenge, sadness, and a little fear. Show yourself, Mirage! We all know you're here. Very well. Mirage said, stepping out of the shadows with a smile. You have earned that much, I suppose. Get out of that stupid disguise! Tracy yelled. I was there, remember? I know that the elements of harmony cured your original host of you a year ago. So, show your true form, witch! Fine, as you wish. The feline woman said with a smile, her form dissipating. After a few moments, it was replaced by a shadow with two slitted cat eyes. It quickly turned to a larger cat being than before. Slowly, the fog began to form into a towering cat-like woman looming over the mares. Whereas her old fur was gray, her cut was now black as night, with bits of black fog still flowing off of it. A smile graced her lips as she looked at the ponies, their dark green eyes sending a chill of fear down their spines. Is this better, Trixie? A feline. Like Katrina, right? Lara asked, trying to sell her legs. Yes, of a sort. She smiles as the dark purple dress she wore flowed, looking down at the ponies. The truth is, we embodiments tend to show our true form so rarely that we forget and pick one that we like the most. I just prefer to happen to prefer cats. Real nightmare fuel would be to see Discord's real form. Trixie shook off that fear and stepped forward. So, is this your plan? Lure us here to the void to kill us slowly. Kill you? Oh no, my plans are far too extreme to get to stop its simple murder. Though, trust me, your deaths are coming. What I plan is something a little more inspired. With a snap of her finger, she revealed the bodies of Cadence, Shining Armor, and Spike, hanging by chains. The bodies covered in bru cuts and bruises. Caretop gasped as he looked at the bodies of the three. What did you do to them? Nothing, Deadly, I can't assure you. Mirage said, snapping her fingers to dismiss the two points and young drank. It's just that, when I appeared from my void into their room, they challenged me. Apparently, giving their loved one a gift was offensive to them, so they attacked me. 
wanting to stop me in their heroic foolishness. I have better plans. So what's your plan? Let me see. tell you what I see in your future. Ross said, the fog around her forming images for the ponies to see. With the deaths of their students, Luna and Celestia will become reclusive. Luna will never risk another pony's life, thus will never take another student. And the desire to protect the Equestria alone, she will fall in battle. Tracy let out a gas of horror as she watched Luna stab through the heart by a pony clouded in the darkness. This will hurt the Sun Princess ever more, breaking her to a point where she will abandon Equestria. Lightning Dust growled. Celestia would never abandon us! If her family is dead, she would. No dragon wealth to raise, no student to care for, and no sister to keep her company. For a goddess, she certainly attached herself with many failings. <laughs> Mirage chuckled as she wiped in the midst of Celestia flying away from Equestria. It is a better weakness to think that friends and family are a weakness, Octavia denied. Undisturbed by the musician's outburst, Mirage continued. The ponies will begin to fall into despair, but they will find a light of hope. Cadence, despite the loss of her husband and young adoptive Drake, will present the ponies with a new light of hope. It will be a symbol for them to hold to, a way for them to believe they will see the light of a new day. Then I will rip the unnamed princess away from Cadence's body before the child has a chance to breathe life. This will break her. An image formed of Cadence crying over three greys as she held a small bundle on her four legs. The image then changed to a pink alicorn holding a knife to her throat. No! Blossom Force shouted as she watched the end of the scene, tears coming to her eyes. With her death, all of Equestria will fall into a pit of despair that will never come back from. It will be filled with an eternal hole of hopelessness and misery that will never return. This will become my greatest achievement. And what's better? She chuckled slowly. <laughs> Once I am done with you six, I will trek down your harmonic connections with other worlds and devastate them much the same way. This multiverse will become nothing more than a black spot where no hope will ever come from again. You think we're going to take that? Yelled Lightning Dust as he flew off from the group, only to be slashed by Mirage's claws. Raising a clawed hand, Mirage shook her head. No, not at all. I expect you to do the hero thing. She then unleashed a bolt of lightning from her hand to electrocute the five other ponies. And stop me. It takes the oncoming defeat so much more. Don't you know when to shut up? Shouted a familiar scratchy voice as a rainbow streak pulsed through the void making a whole light appear where she entered. What a- OOF! Alright, so for this fight song, I've decided to use Eye to Eye. You may use a cover if you wish. But I prefer- but I love Eye to Eye from a Goofy movie, so shut up. Mirage grunted as the rainbow trail hit her straight in the stomach. Looking up, she watched this rainbow dash flew up in front of her with a cocky smile. No! How could this- uh! Her question was stopped by a lasso wrapping herself around her neck, pulling her backwards. Now, Pinky! shouted Applejack through the rope as he held it in her teeth. Yes, ma'am, Applejack, ma'am! Skilled the pink party pony as he got on the rope and got the cart reeled along the lasso. When she got to Mirage's head and began to lightly beat against her skull with her hooves. Mirage growled as he turned to swipe at the pink mirror, only to beat grass and air. Her vision was then blocked by a set of bright blue eyes. Um, excuse me. I just wanted to let you know I'm a distraction for my friend. I was about to hit you with a barrage of diamonds from the realm. As Flare Side flew away, Mirage let out a flat. What? She then looked on in horror as Rarity lifted several gems from the ground and sent them flying at her, cutting deep. Ah! How could this be? Foolish Mirage! <laughs> Trixie said with a chuckle. Once again, the great and powerful Trixie defeated you with another illusion. As she adjusted her hat, she continued, See, Tarxy had a feeling you would be coming for her and the others, so she came prepared. Knowing that the bearers needed time to rest and heal up after the pain you put them through, Tarxy put a lucid spell over them as he entered a healing sleep. Then, she proceeded to act her heart out! But you don't have the power to cast a healing sleep spell. How on earth? <sighs> 
With a shudder of fear, Mirage stopped herself as a bit of fear came over her. No. No. It can't be! A bolt of purple magical energy flew from the void, hitting Mirage in the stomach. A young and soft voice came from the direction of the beam, tempered by a light growl. You know, I don't mind that you tried to kill me. That was something I've come to expect since I've got these two large targets on my back. Fly Sparkle says he walked to Trixie's side. Every step she took was punctuated by a crackle of magical energy around her hooves. But what really ticks me off is that you tried to kill my friends! As Trixie watched Twilight hit Miraz with a narrow magic missile, the blue mare smiled. Good to have you back. Twilight could always smile at Trixie. Thanks for everything. Oh, and you have something of mine. Twilight didn't use her magic to take her crown and place it on her head. A chuckle came from Tracy as he put her, took the crown back. It looks better on you, anyway, Sparkle. Thank you, Little Moon. Twilight smirked as she adjusted her crown, blocked a fireball from Rod as her friends gathered around her. Fine. If I had to kill you twelve myself, then I will! Rod says he watched Trixie's team gathered around the resistance. As she watched the twelve ponies form a line face her with faces of pure determination, she thrust her hand out with lightning crackling from her fingertips. Your mind games couldn't take us down. I'm going to guarantee you, you ain't either! Applejack bragged, pulling her hat down over her eyes. As the lightning flew out from her eyes, several things happened at once. Rainbow Dash kicked three of the bolts meant for her friends, while Twilight and Trixie combined a spell to protect the rest. Applejack raced out, rolling under a bo bolt and bucking out her eyes in the leg. The Catwoman screamed in pain as the pit connected and hit the problem mare in the stomach, sending her flying. This led her open for Rainbow Dash to fly straight to her chest, repeatedly struck her with a series of fast punches. The Simon Mare's hose struck so fast and hard, her four legs became an instant blur. Mirage grunted and growled as Rainbow Dash struck her, grabbed the speed through her claws and pulled Rainbow Mare off. Her claws began to slowly squeeze Rainbow Dash, listening to a slow crack of her rib. However, Blossom 4 flew in front of her face, distracting her long enough for her grip on Rainbow Dash to loosen and let go. Fireside flew up and managed to help Rainbow Dash back down to the ground. The Cyan Mare smirked to her best friend to show she was okay and returned to her feet. A yell for Blossom 4 directed the two Pegasi towards Blossom 4 falling through the air with a gas on her stomach. But before either pony could move to save her, Lightning Dust flew under her and carried her to safety to the ground. Dust had struck into the thighs of the abutment only to have her back burned by a fireball from her eyes. As the blue pegasus began to fall, she was caught in a leaping tackle by Carrot Top. As he set lightning dust down, Carrot picked up one to drop gems and looked at Octavia. Nodding, the great earth pony drew a long screeching note from her cello. It sent Mirage really back in pain, her claws barely cutting the flyer size hind leg, lying for Carrot to get close to her back as slices of gray fur went to diamond. Yelling in pain and rage, the monster spun and sent a piece of rock to the carrot farmer. Smiling, she raised her hand to burn carrot. Stop when she felt something sticky in her hand, stopping her magic. Turning, she sought daggers at Pinkie Pie, who was holding an extra large bazooka. Pizooka Mark II! Giggled the pink mare when she with glee as the equal parts of insanity and fun. Speaking loud, Mirage looked at her arm to form another fireball. A stare from Flare so I caused her to stumble back. Firesight began to beat her heart wings as hard as she could, causing the embodiment to cough violently. As he coughed, she managed to slice ice-like claws across the buttery mare's side, sending her flying towards the ground on a corkscrew. Firesight was saved by use of magic for rarity and was settled down by Applejack. The pink-maned pagans just looked up to Applejack and smiled softly and asserted that she was alright. What on earth? exclaimed Miraz as she recovered from her coffee fit to see Pinkie Pie holding Lyra in a silent sleeve sot. Fire! Fire! Screamed the pink and mint colored unicorn as Pinkie Pie launched her from a slingshot and strained Mirage. Last of her horn, the abutment stumbled back and was barraged by Lyra's Lyra, hitting her with the loudest sounds he could hit. Howling pain, Mirage slashed at Lyra, sending her straight to the ground. As he struggled to stand back up, the cat monster called out twelve bolts of lightning and struck the twelve points and forced them to their knees. As their coats began to crackle from the brain, Twilight began to carry the magic of her own. Drawing the lightning towards her. Once the twelve bolts were collected to her, Twilight redirected a back of Mirage. Flinching from the power of her own lightning, Mirage lifted two fingers and erected three stone blades that cut into the sides of Rarity, Twilight, and Trixie. Flinching from the pain in her side, Trixie used her magic to grab the stones along Rarity. Together, the two flew them over to Carrot Top and Applejack. 
Slide throws one of the stones into pure ice. Carry top nine, kick the ice stone, bring it to several tiny spears that struck Mirage along with the stone. The apple tech bucked into her. Roaring pain, the embodiment did not see Rainbow Dash grab the hose of lightning dust. Hold on, Dust! You got it, Dash! Lightning dust smirked. That needed to be given a hint what the plan was. Rusting her four legs out of the torpedo formation, the two Pegasi flew at Mirage, spiraled together a twister. In fact, turning, combining the two contrails into a helix core screw of rainbow and lightning energy. Flying as fast as he could, the two Pegasi struck hard to Mirage's belly, sending her reeling back. Before she could retaliate, Twilight and Tracy froze her feet to the ground. Octavia! yelled Lyra as he held up her lyre. Octavia nodded, pointing her bow to her instrument, ringing along the strings in time of Lyra's musical playing. Together, the two created a hard rock riff that began to hit Mirage with powerful musical magic, hard light imagery, and powerful flames. Mirage then looked at the two mare, uh, the mares by covered in cuts and burns. A trail of blood slid down her arms. She couldn't help but smile as she looked at the twelve ponies, all in pain and looking tired. The sight almost brought a laugh, but that silence was a whole, a whole opened up, letting in powerful moonlight. You dare threaten the well-being of our subjects? For this insult, you will be punished! Glinda yelled, flying through Mar the hole and hitting Mirage with her magic. Oh, by the way, you see, Ryers? This is how you use Luna! And Celestia! Take note! As Mirage screamed from the force of the Night Princess's attacks, she began to try and hit Luna with her own spells. This attempt was soon halted by another voice booming through the crowds. For all you have done to my family... I will see you burn! Celestia shouted, hitting Mirage with a powerful burst of sun magic. The beam burnt a black spot to Mirage's stomach. As the two princesses fired beam of magic out to Mirage, the whole ponies gathered around her group. Twice stood bravely with her friends. Tracy stood with her group, their eyes narrow with determination. As Mirage lay on another scream of pain, Twilight looked up at the embodiment. You know, I have to thank you, Mirage. The Alcorn Princess said with a smile. As he continued, Celestia landed behind Twilight, a prideful smile on her lips. For the longest time since getting these wings, I have been afraid. Afraid of losing who I am, of losing myself, or even losing the desire to try anything new. What's more, I was afraid of losing my friends. Twilight didn't turn to smile towards Trixie, as Luna landed next to her team. But thanks to you, you had my friends come together to teach me something important. That the bonds I made... The friends I met along my journey will never die, as long as I keep their memories in my heart, and the lessons they taught me, I will not lose them. Even when they are gone, I will make new friends, new memories, and have them grow inside my heart along with my old friends. That way, they will stay with me together, forever. Ross uh, screamed in defiance, firing a beam of energy into two groups, only to watch the shock as a rainbow shield bought the beams. You claim to be despair? You claim to be fear? We are hope! At that, twin beams of rainbow light shot out for the collective group and flew straight at the environment. Did I predict the finale? I think I predicted the finale. That quiet woman looked on in fear as so the twin streaks of rainbow light flew in her. Pika Pie thrust her hoof in the air as possible for a smile. In return, the beams turned into images of a balloon and a pair of flowers. Lyra and Flareside both smiled, turning the rainbow beam into a lyre, a trio of butterflies. Applejack and Octavia nodded, the arms mare tipping her hat. The beam became representations of their marks. Rarity and Carrot Top caught their heads confidently, making their marks appear, striking to Mirage's body, setting her reeling. Rainbow Dazz and Lightning Dust held up their hoes in defiance, creating two unique lightning bolt kitty marks. You know, if anybody wants to complain about my work, uh, they can always complain how this scene uh, pops up again in uh, Fall Starfleet when the main six takes out uh, Krogar. But what can I say? I really, really love the finale of uh, Yu Yu Hakusho the movie when the four spirit detectives use their combined energy to create representations of their attacks. It's just so cool! Celestia and Luna looking to each other. Smiling before facing Mirage with a smirk. Sun and moon blasting Mirage back to the ground. Twilight looked to Trixie, smiling softly and says, Say, thank you for saving me. Trixie smiled back, turned to Mirage. The two students of Sun and Moon hitting her with a starburst and a magic wand cutie mark. Struggling to her feet, Mirage let out a gas of horror as the twin beams began to change, turning into twin alicorns. 
One alicorn was a dark violet with a rainbow mane that blazed white, orange, pink, purple, and cyan, and yellow. The other alicorn was a deep blue with a mane of gray, blue, green, light white, light yellow, and azure. Mirage tried to run, but was struck hard by the two alicorns as they ran straight at her, firing beams of rainbow light that pushed Mirage through a black hole. Again, this shows up later at fall. I wonder what this says. Grabbing onto the edge of the holes, he screamed, Why? What makes you think you can defeat back the darkness? The purple alicorn smiled. Because I have friends who will help me. And the other alicorn, the mirage through the hole, sealing it. Slowly, the black fog dissipated, leaving behind the medical room. The bearers, two ponies and a drake. Panting, Tali smiled and looked to her friends. Thank you. The first thing Twilight could hear as she slowly opened her eyes was the soft chirping of birds outside her window. Looking her slow, slowly out of bed, she took a long look around the white room and saw the different flowers and items that were left by her bed. Then she watched the unicorn bear walk into her room. You're awake! Trixie said with a happy smile as he ran in. Behind her floated a pair of indigo flowers as she pointed to a vase. Not that Trixie was worried, to mind you. Twilight rolled her eyes. How long was I out? Four days. Long enough for every pony else to heal. I told them that you were just tired and needed some real sleep, and that you were no longer under a spell. But your friends wouldn't believe me, so Luna had to reconfirm it for all of them. <laughs> Tracy Jen chuckled. This news, of course, didn't stop Piggy from trying to have a Thanks Celestia Twilight's Alive and A-OK slumber party in this room to pass four nights straight! Of course not. <laughs> Twilight giggled. Did you stay by my bed the entire time? No. Regulations forced us to do it two at a time. Did you know the princess was this close to changing them? Tracy said, not walking to sit on Twilight's bed. The others are all outside, talking to each other. Are your friends leaving? Twilight asked. They don't have the excuses your friends do, so they need to. Tracy said, looking out the window. Besides, Lightning needs to go for her new position with the Shadow Bolts. You know, sometimes I think to myself, if I were to do this again, would I change... Would I swap out lightning dust for raindrops or for another uh, Pegasus, like, say, Spitfire? Maybe. There have been a lot of alternate six fix for verses lately, and a lot of them have tricks me, so who knows? Your friends did all of it. Yes. And what they did, I'll never forget. I was so afraid that those dreams would come true. That I would lose myself. But thanks to them, I see it now. Those nightmares will never happen. Because of how they changed me. Twice smiled softly. But you did a lot too. You, who never led anything before. You kept cool and kept them all together. Even though you were worried and afraid. Trixie was never... Twy cocked an eyebrow. Really? Not once. Maybe a little. But then she looked at her team and realized she had to succeed. Because uh, they needed her. You needed her. And so did they. Tracy said, looking out the window. Friends have that effect on you. That's I said. They tend to hold you up when you're weak. And help strengthen all that you are. They also make you want to try harder. Because you want to live up to them. It's why I'm no longer a friend of like losing them. Because what kind of friend would I be if I abused the gifts they gave me? So I got out the bed and walked to the window. Now come on. Let's say hi to our friends. Friends, yeah. Guess they always have been. Tracy smiles as he turned to walk out the room. So I opened the window and takes a deep breath of air before jumping off and taking off. A voice began to sing in an upbeat and uplifting tune. A friend for a life, that's what you are to me. Tracy smiles back and walks to the courtyard where the others are. A friend for a life, that's what you are to me. Rainbow Dash finishes talking to Lightning as he hears Twilight singing. Turning, she smiles a beaming grin and flies to the alicorn with a giant embrace. As tears fall from her eyes, Rainbow Dash added her voice to the song. Couldn't see what was right there in front of me. Turned my back, got my mind off track. Lightning does look down to where Trixie was walking under her. Flew down to join her new friend. 
giving Tracy a high huff. That's also joining the song. Yeah, you saw a world that was something new entirely. Help me to see all the possibilities. You see, I really like this song, but I hate the fact that it was at the end credits of Equestria Girls, because I feel like this song wasn't earned in Equestria Girls. Maybe it's a season finale, or after a longer journey, this song was working, but not here. But not in the movie. So, I decided to put it in the right spot. Rarity, hearing the voices overhead, beams a sworn smile seeing her friend alive. At a gallop, she ran after them, singing with a slow tune. Oh, like a star in the daylight, or a diamond at night. Caratop, seeing Trixie walking by her, smiles at the traveling companions and hugs Trixie, looking in her eyes, saying she forgave her. Your light was hidden from my side. Trixie shook her head and instead hugged her new friend. Then, with the two ponies following her, began to follow Twilight and her friends. Singing along with Twilight, she began to sing. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. First, I walked by some of her animals to see her Twilight's voice and Rarity's hoof steps. Began to sing Twilight to herself. Every friendship is tested. You say you're sincere. Lyra watched as Trixie approached. A soft smile on her lips as she added her voice to the song. But it's all unclear now. But with a word. Applejack, putting her hat over her eyes to hide her tears. Watch with Flare's eye. Helping the pigs' thoughts be heard out loud. Everything changes. It just that let you and I ride back. In a nearby park. Shining and keen, Swat says Twilight and friends walk by. Looks like she's gonna be alright. Kane said, looked up at Shining. Maybe you later you should tell her? I will. Shining said, watching his sister fly away. That's what you said about the wedding. I don't want to be in that delivery room, and you just did finally remember to tell her. Kane said, lightly punching her husband in the shoulder. Okay, got the message. Shining said with a puss. Unaware of what was transpiring in the park. Rarity and Caratops sang together in a long tone. Oh, like a star in the daylight, star in the daylight, or a diamond at night, diamond at night. Octavia, walking up with the group behind her, cello and toe, smiles as he played his song with slightly faster tempo. Your light will shine when the time is right. Twilight and Tracy began to walk towards the bridge, their voices playing as one now. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. Pinkie Pie, standing on top of a building, leaned forward a little. Does he pretend to fall, but was saved by Rainbow Dash and Twilight? It sat her down as he sang her other soul, upbeat melody. When I put my hoof out, and I thought I would fall. Bossifor flew down to her friends and gave them a warm hug. A voice joining in with Pinkies. You do what I needed, and you came around to fix it all. Tracy and her team ran to the bridge first. As she looked at all of them, felt her heart warm. Taking a deep breath, she began to sing what she felt in her heart. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. Twilight lands with her friends, standing up within a show that will always be together. A voice happy and upbeat, she sang the loudest of the group. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. Sing along with her sister, little lines behind Trixie, adding her voice to the group. Celestia landed next to Twilight, singing in a high tone. A friend for life, that's what you are to me. As the voices joined in the harmony, Kane's and Shiny watched with Spike in tow. Using her magic, Kane's lifts Spike and places him on Twilight Sparkle's back. A smile to two members of her family. Oh, wow! Oh, like a star in the daylight. A friend for life. That's what you are to me. Like a diamond at night. Twilight looks at her friends and smiles. That's what you are to me. The at. So, they stopped me from causing despair. So what? Roz said, looking at the portal to the world of Equestria. Never said I'm one to quit. I'll just... Oh, what's this? She stopped herself from walking as she saw a small point of light fly towards the portal. Oh, what's this? 
Seize that world is going to have a few new guests. Oh well, I have another world in mind. With a low chuckle, she walked to another portal. This one, I'll have to thank Luna for. Mirage will return in. Luna versus Nice Mirror's Rain. I really got good to work on that one. Probably one day. But I do know that either that for some reason during January, I had a strange urge to want to do Heart of Worlds. There's something telling me I should do that for January. Hmm. I might, or I might pull off something else. Till then, see you on the Louvre side, guys. See you next time.